there. I suppose you're wondering why it is that I'm doing a knitting video with paper and a pen. And that is because this time we are talking about buttonholes. And I have knitted a swatch, but before you can even begin to do buttonholes, you have to do a little figuring. So I happen to know I have knitted 48 rows in this swatch. It's just a little sample piece. And yes, I do sometimes, not always, but sometimes I do swatch buttonholes. I call it auditioning to figure out which one is the best for the project that I have in mind. So people will ask me, do you rip your swatches out and use them in the project or do you keep your swatches? This is the number one reason why I keep a swatch because I never know what I need to do. This swatch has been knit and washed and measured and the garment is underway, but let's say I decide, hmm, I think I want to do buttons up the front rather than do a clasp or snaps or anything else. I really want a nice buttonhole. Well, the first thing you have to decide is what buttons are you going to use? And oftentimes I will take my swatch to the store and I will try out all of the button possibilities on the knitting. I'll just lay them right there and see how I like them. Or possibly I'll do the buttonholes and then I'll take it to the store and actually push the buttons through the buttonholes to see which ones fit best. It just depends on, mm, honestly, my time and my whims. Usually I like to have the buttons on hand because I want to know how big of a button am I planning for. If you don't have your buttons on hand, you're going to have to make an executive decision. In this video, we're going to talk about the Yarn Over and Knit Two Together buttonholes. They're very simple. They expand to accommodate a wide variety of buttons. So that's kind of a nice way to start. I usually go for something that's about mm, five eighths or three quarters of an inch on worsted weight yarn. You can't use teeny tiny little buttons if your stitches are bigger than the buttons. So you really have to get a, a button that's going to cover at least two, three stitches would be good. This is worsted weight on an eight, so it's five stitches to the inch. If I got a one inch wide button, my yarn over knit two together buttonhole might not be my best option. We'll get to that later. Right now, let's just talk about our yarn over and knit two together buttonholes and planning. Like I said, I have 48 rows and we're gonna pretend this is the front of my sweater and I want to pick up a button band here and knit out in rib. So I'm gonna take my piece of paper and I'm going to draw a cartoon. I say cartoon because it doesn't have to be overly accurate in size, the straight, the edges don't have to be totally straight. And I'm going to do some planning. I know I have 48 rows. If I pick up three stitches in every four rows, which is the standard pickup, three for every four, then my button band should have approximately 36 stitches. If I'm going for 36 stitches and I want to have three buttons, I will place one in the center, one down at the bottom, and one up near the top. You really wanna be careful that you don't get too close to the bottom or the top edge because your button can't hang over the edge. It just doesn't look great. So if I'm just gonna do yarn over and knit two together as my buttonholes, each one of these buttonholes is gonna take me two stitches. So I'm gonna draw a little arrow into each one of these. And yes, this is really honestly how I do it every time. Two stitches go here, two stitches go here, and two stitches go here. If I have a three quarter inch button, that means I need to have at least two stitches out here. I'd really rather it be more than that, but at least two, and at least two out here. If I add this up, that's two and two and two and two and two, there's 10 stitches 
of my 36. That leaves me with 26 stitches. That means if I take those two, though that 26, and I put it into two groups, one between the first and second buttonhole, and one between the second and third buttonhole, I'm gonna have 13 stitches here and 13 stitches here. That may be exactly right. Maybe that's what I want. Or possibly I might say, you know, I'm gonna be doing knit two, purl two ribbing, which means I'm gonna have sets of two. I don't really want 13 stitches out here, if I can help it. So maybe I'll make this 12 and this 12. What do I do with those two stitches? Move them over here and make this number three and make this number three. So now I can add it up. Three plus two is five, plus 12 is 17, plus two is 19, plus 12 is 21, 31, 31, 32, 33, and a three is 36. This should, should accommodate all of my stitches that I plan to pick up down the edge of my, of my button band. So let's try it. I have over here some nice contrasting yarn so that we can really see what I'm doing. And I have my swatch. And I have my needle that is two sizes smaller than I knitted the garment because you want the button bands to pull in and you want them to be more durable and tighter knit is more durable. If you look at the edge of your swatch, this is just stocking it. I did absolutely nothing for an edge other than knit to the end and purl to the end. I wanna take my knitting needle, let me zoom in, and I wanna make sure that I am picking up one whole stitch in from the edge and my first and my last stitch need to be right against the cast on and the bind off. If you don't get them into the very beginning of the cast on or the bind off, you're going to have a stair step in your swatch or in your, your sweater. So you'll have this little tab of knitting and then the, tab, the button band will begin. And that's not really a very attractive look. So we wanna be sure we start right here in the edge of the button band. And then we're going to take our yarn and we're just gonna loop it over the needle. And we're gonna use the needle or a crochet hook. If this is difficult for you, you can use the crochet hook. And I'm gonna pull that first stitch up. Do yourself a favor, leave yourself a tail that's at least six inches long, but honestly, I tend towards eight when I'm picking up stitches like this because it's not secured. I don't want a knot in here adding anything to the bulk. I just want it to stay in place. Do not work with your tail. From here, I'm going to continue and I'm going to pick up in three stitches in a row and skip one all the way along the length, staying, staying in the same ridge between stitches the whole way. So here's my first one right in the corner. My next one goes directly above it and then one more. I now have three stitches. I'm going to skip my next opportunity. See that hole there? Don't use that one. We're gonna to go to the next hole. We're gonna knit and pull up a loop. Knit and pull up a loop. Knit and pull up a loop. I now have two groups of three. I will continue doing this, picking up three and skipping one the whole length of my piece. This should get me approximately 36 stitches. And I say approximately because, you know, the best laid plans, plus I know I have 48 rows. And if I start with three and skip one, I'm going to end with skip one, which is not what I wanna do. So as I come to the other end in my work, I'm going to be mindful of the fact that I have to end in the last opportunity to pick up a stitch. As I work my way down here in groups of three and skipping one, 
when I spread them out on my needle, you can see they fall into neat groups of three and I can make sure that I'm not skipping too much. Back to picking up the stitches. In three, skip one. Now, this is assuming a ribbed button band. If you wanted to do garter stitch or seed stitch as your button band, you would not want to follow this proportion. You would have to test it Usually it's pick up two and skip one because those stitches are so much wider than the rows are tall. Okay, I'm here to my last group. I have to skip one. If I pick up three, it's gonna leave me not picking up the very last loop. So what I wanna do is skip that one at the end of the second to last group, pick up one or two and skip one here. Then I can finish out my pickup in the very corner of my bind off. When you start knitting this, it will never show. You've got the proper number, but the most important thing is that your first stitch and your last stitch get right up into the cast on or the bind off. Now with 36 stitches, I am going to do a purl one, knit one, all the way to the end. Why purl one, knit one instead of knit one, purl one? Well, I'm on the wrong side. So I'm going to purl one and knit one. If you were concerned and you wanted a balanced, look at me, not even doing what I'm supposed to do. Purl one, knit one. If you wanted a balanced appearance, meaning that you had a knit at the top and a knit at the bottom when you're looking at the right side, then you would need to pick up one extra stitch and have 37, and you would just add that extra stitch into one of your groups of three at the beginning or end and make it four. Back this up so you guys don't have to watch my fingernails swoop back and forth. We're just gonna keep on with the ribbing. Now, I'm going with that assumption that I have a 5 eighths or 3 quarter inch button, which of course I did not go to the button store before I started doing this. When I get back into my studio, I will dig out some buttons and we'll talk about figuring how many stitches and size and all of that in a separate video. But for today, we can at least talk about how to do the yarn over and knit two together buttonholes. Okay, finishing out the row, Knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, and I should end knit one because I began with purl one. When I turn this over, I'm ready to do the next row. This is going to be probably six rows or seven rows in an inch. If I have a three quarter inch button, I need to make sure I have at least a three quarter inch, probably more like an inch button band, or maybe even slightly bigger. So what I wanna do is a couple of rows of ribbing. If you do the buttonhole too soon, it's going to lap over into the body of your garment. And we don't want that. You wanna make sure that you get enough depth of your button band that probably at least half of your button, if not more, fits before you start. In other words, if you looked at the holes in your button, is the button hanging over into the body? If it is, it's too soon to do the buttonholes. If it's not, then you're probably good to go. So I'm going to do this row and one more and I will be ready for a right side row and we will talk about actually working our, this is the pattern, we're gonna actually work it. I have done my pickup row and three rows of ribbing and I'm ready to work my buttonhole row. And I know this because I know I'm aiming for three quarter of an inch buttons, which means before I do the buttonhole row, I need to have half of that width or three eighths of an inch to make sure that my button fits fully onto my button band. I have a half an inch, so I'm good to go. I can do it right now. So according to our instructions, I'm going to work three stitches. So 
So, purl one, knit one, and purl one. And I'm ready to work the two stitches involved in my buttonhole, a yarn over and a decrease. It's usually referred to as a yarn over and knit two together buttonhole, but look at this example. Right here, I am looking at a knit and a purl. This stitch is what the yarn over is going to take the place of, and what I want to remain is the purl. So if I yarn over and purl two together, I maintain the rhythm of the ribbing. I don't break my ribbing pattern. And the yarn over assumes the position of the knit, and the knit goes underneath the purl two, and I'm good to go, or purl, so I'm good to go. So I've done my yarn over and my decrease. That's those two stitches. Now I'm gonna work 12 stitches in pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I am ready to do another yarn over and decrease, yarn over knit two together, yarn over purl two together, buttonhole here in the center. My first stitch is a knit. It's the one that's going to go away. The purl is what I want to remain. So I'm going to yarn over and bring the yarn forward to purl these two together. Now I'm going to continue on with my ribbing for another 12 stitches. Ta-da! I'm going to work one more yarn over and purl two together to complete my final buttonhole. I have three stitches left and I can just rib to the end. When we talked about figuring this out and doing three stitches to get to center, or three rows to get to the point where I can put the buttonhole, I need to make sure I have at least three on the other side of the buttonhole. Remember when it's fastened, it's going to pull this way, meaning the button is going to be more over this part than this part. So sometimes I'll put an extra row or two over here so that when the button pulls, it looks centered. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to work a few more rows and I'll be back. Here I am with my finished buttonhole band and I have worked three, I picked up stitches and then I worked another three rows before putting my yarn over and decrease button holes in place. And then I have worked another three rows. Another nice little secret to making nice button bands is to bind off in ribbing. And again, you don't want this to be super tight because you want the button band to have a certain amount of stretch to it. But by bind off in rib, I mean, if it's a purl stitch, you purl it. If it's a knit stitch, you knit it. And you continue binding off as the stitches accumulate on the right needle. So knit stitch, bind it off, purl stitch, bind it off. And you keep working this all the way across. If you get lost in your head as to where you are, all you have to do is look down at your ribbing. This is a knit stitch. I want to knit it. What this does is it allows your bind off to zigzag into the depths of the rib. If you just bound off all in knit or all in purl, you're creating a straight line at the outside edge of what otherwise is a very dimensional bit of knitting. And it flattens it out and it spreads it out, which is not usually the look I'm going for in my button bands. So I love to do the bind off in rib technique to finish off my button bands. Again, if you lose where you are in your head, look at where the stitch is coming from to determine what you should do next. You need to make sure 
that you are not binding off tightly because that will restrict the amount of stretch your button band needs. And the ribbed band is there to create memory for the edges of your garment. Usually in outerwear sweaters, they are done tighter than they are in casual indoor wear garments. So you're trying to trap air up against your body and insulate your body with your own body heat and keep it from escaping out of the garment. The wool in the garment will help, but anything you can do to pull the edges closer to your body is also going to help you. Here in Texas, that's not so much of a concern, but if you were going skiing, that might be a concern. If I didn't want this button band to snug up against my body as much, I might not drop two needle sizes. Maybe I would only drop one, but I would certainly drop at least one because nothing is worse than a button band that flares. Having completed this button band, I'm going to finish off the last stitch and then we're gonna take a look at what we have. So we have the front of our cardigan. Move our little notes. We have the front of our cardigan and I've put a button band and you might say, but Elisa, that pulls in. When you wear it, the button bands are intended to be worn slightly stretched. You want them to start out a little bit pulled in so that they then will stretch out to shape because the last thing you want is for them to stretch out beyond the length of your button, of your front. So you'll notice that my piece starts right here at the beginning and it ends right here at the end. And my buttonholes are evenly spaced, one at the bottom, one at the top, and one in the middle. Now you can do this same technique with any number of buttons. Let's keep the same number of stitches and see if we can come up with how it looks with five buttonholes. So rather than knit all of these swatches, I'm just gonna do a little theoretical knitting here with my paper. So I have, again, 36 stitches. If I'm going to do five buttonholes, I'm going to place one in the center one near the bottom, one near the top, and then I'm going to place the others equidistant in between. I know each of these buttonholes will take two. And I know I need to have at least two stitches out here and at least two stitches out here. So I have five buttonholes and a beginning and an end, that's 14. That leaves me with 22 stitches and one, two, three, four spaces in between. 22 is not easily divisible by four. However, if I put one of them over here and make this three, and I put one of them out here and make this three, that leaves me with 20. 3 and 3 and 10 is 16. 36 minus 16 is 20. I would have five stitches in between each of my buttonholes. They would be closer together. As a matter of fact, I probably don't want to do this with a three quarter inch button because each button is going to cover a couple of stitches. They would be practically one right on top of the other. But you get the idea on how to do the math. The other thing you need to keep in mind is if this number is odd, then you're going to shift. This first one might be yarn over purl two together. The next one might be yarn over knit two together, then yarn over purl two together, then yarn over knit two together, and end with yarn over purl two together. Because you have an odd number of stitches, you're gonna encounter the need for the yarn over at different places in your ribbing. From there, you can do whatever you need to. If you had 100 stitches, you could do the exact same thing. You would just change all the numbers and plug them in. Normally, button bands are done in even, or button holes are done in odd numbers. And the theory behind that is that an odd number is pleasing to the human eye. 
if I put an even number of buttonholes down the front of my sweater, I don't have a focal point in the middle. Your eye kind of bops back and forth in between. But if I put an odd number, our eyes generally settle to the middle automatically. It's an aesthetic. If you need an even number of buttons, you can certainly use an even number of buttons. They are usually equidistant in the middle, but they don't have to be equidistant at the end. If you had an extra stitch or two, you could put one down here and not up here. If you were going to be picking up then and go around here for a, a neck band, you might not need, or you might need one extra up here so that you ended up with two down here, but three up here because when you pick up the band across here, one of them is gonna disappear into the pickup row. All of these are things to think about and consider. They're a lot of fun and in the next video, I'm going to be talking about other ways to do buttonholes other than yarn over knit together, but this is my go-to default buttonhole by far, unless I have some exceptional reason why I wouldn't want to use it. And that would be if I had a button that was entirely too big to be accommodated by the yarn over alone. I would need more stitches to, um, to accommodate the size of my button. Those really big buttons are really cool, but they require a different buttonhole. Or perhaps your button is irregularly shaped. All of those are very different circumstances, and we're going to talk about those at another video. Thanks for joining me.